Excellent. Kaylee, thanks so much. And Kim, thanks as well. I just want to reiterate something that you were saying, uh, the, the MEP 40, 2040, the difference between the challenge that's been issued by Carbon Leadership Forum and the commitment that we have started uh, as a steering committee and the four very specific tasks that are assigned to that commitment. There is a difference between those two. It's very similar to the difference between the challenge issued by Architecture 2030 and the commitment made by AIA 2030. Similarly with the um, SE 2050, the difference between the challenge and the commitment. Uh, we think that's important to, to pull out because the commitment is uh, about organizational change within our companies. It's about uh, growing our own education and awareness around this topic uh, in order so that we can do that with our clients. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of aspirations around the commitment uh, that are specifically in response to the challenge that the CLF has issued. And we can get into that during the discussion too, if it's helpful. Um, uh, I'm going to kick us off with an example of creating a company plan. So uh, we at Bureau Happold have just started publishing an annual global sustainability report, which um, I, I found surprising and some of you might find surprising given that we are a company of over 2000 people. We've been in business for a long time uh, and we just started reporting information about all of our sustainability goals, um, including carbon. So starting in 2018, 2019, uh, we captured our information, published it, uh, and then have, have, uh, have published an annual report since then. Uh, we wanted to share just a few examples of what some of the tasks um, or items might be within a plan that you might be looking at. And uh, during the discussion, it would be super to come back to this slide in case there are other items that everyone thinks could be incorporated. Uh, this is something that, that we think we could sort of make a one pager on and put on the MEP 2040 website as a starting place to, to start to think about what a company plan could include, should include, et cetera. Uh, so here we're, we're laying out the idea of setting clear targets, allowing for the evolution of those targets from year to year, defining specific action items to achieve targets, which might include um, tasks around training needs, addressing scope gaps, uh, reviewing standards within your, your organization or within um, the greater organizational um, uh, groups that exist in our industry, uh, incorporating the, the low G GWP refrigerants, uh, which um, Scott in the chat, you did ask a question about that. There is gonna be a good amount of presentation on refrigerants. So let us know if you still have that question once we get through that. Um, and then requesting EPDs from vendors on all projects, which is also something that Christy is going to be talking about. In terms of measuring and reporting annual project progress, as Kim said, you can't manage what you don't measure. Um, and uh, while we do want to make sure that we are capturing case studies, lessons learned, and data within the MEP 2040 community, uh, we also recognize that there, there is and can be sensitivity around data. Uh, we're, we're having conversations with AIA 2030 and SE 2050 to understand how they collect information, uh, what, the, what the specific division of data should be between those three organizations, how we might be able to capitalize on some of the tools and reporting structures that they've already put into place uh, so that we can streamline for everyone involved, given that we understand there are probably lots of you who are also signed up to some of these other initiatives. Uh, on the next slide, uh, a bit of an introduction in terms of where we started at Bureau Happold. So setting clear targets, uh, the little snapshot in the bottom left-hand corner is where we started with the first global sustainability report. We were addressing uh, carbon for our own operations, our physical footprint with our offices and travel, uh, as well as our projects and talking about uh, operational carbon. Uh, as the conversation evolved to continue embodied carbon, we made that update. So the, the larger picture on the screen is where we've updated those goals to include embodied carbon, and we'll continue to revisit these goals um, as we go to make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable. Uh, a snapshot from our report on the next slide shows uh, a number of specific action items that we've targeted internally to achieve the targets that we're setting ourselves up for on this slide uh, or on this page, specifically looking at embodied carbon. 
Um, I'm, the examples here are uh, copy paste from the first slide in terms of what some of the ideas might be for action items. Uh, and notably this, uh, because we worked on this uh, in the, the first version of our report that came out around embodied carbon, there was a pretty strong focus around the structural engineering team within Bureau Hoppold uh, and not as much focus uh, on the MEP team. And that's yet another evolution that we'll be capturing within the next versions of the reporting that we're doing. Uh, on the next slide, shifting into the 2020 report and looking at the way in which we've uh, used our report to show progress on targets, to reiterate what our targets are, and then to, to indicate where we stand against those targets, uh, in addition to noting where there might be future or additional targets uh, again, reiterating that idea of um, making sure that we have flexibility within our own system to continue to evolve uh, because I'm, I'm positive we're not ever gonna get it exactly right. And there's a lot of room there for, um, for improvement. Uh, on the next slide, uh, reiterating, in addition to where we've um, shown progress specifically against the action items that we've laid out and the targets that we've laid out, uh, a brief, set of highlights, uh, which I think has been really helpful for us as an organization to make sure that in addition to specifically reporting against the metrics and the targets uh, and the action items that we've set out, we're also able to celebrate some of the things that might not fall super cleanly within those buckets, um, but to still reiterate what it is that, that we've been working on and how we've we, um, we're contributing to the work overall in terms of climate action with this specific lens of carbon. Um, here I'm noting that Bureau Happold also reports to uh, the AIA 2030 commitment at the moment and their DDX system. Uh, where, and, and again, reiterating that MEP 2040 is beginning to have a conversation with them as well as SC 2050 to make sure that there's not double counting going on and that we can uh, we can attempt to try to streamline for everyone, given that there are a lot of firms that are both AE, there are a lot of engineering firms that are MEP and structure, and there is there is actually a lot of overlap uh, with the way that, that everyone's thinking about this. And ultimately we have a lot of the same goals. So we're trying to figure out how to be um, how to sort of generate that consistency. Um, the next couple slides are from our most recent report. So shifting from the first 2018, 2019 to 2020, and now to 2021, the report that we put out um, just earlier this year on the calendar year of 2021 and, and attempting to capture uh, a look back to understand what we started with in 2019, uh, what we added in 2020, and then Kaylee, if you flip through uh, the the um, where we might also be looking at setting additional targets for 2021, um, and we've I've included snapshots here of both the carbon section as well as the materials and waste section uh, because at the moment we've got embodied carbon sort of noted in both. Uh, and, and should be around the question of materials, but even within um, our organization, we've got uh, targets set around carbon, around materials and waste, around uh, biophilic design, or uh, biophilic design, around biodiversity, around people, around water, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and just within those metrics, there's also a lot of overlap. So uh, keep trying to keep those straight can be a little bit challenging. And I think that's also something that we're evolving uh, as we go. The next slide is uh, capturing, in addition to all of the targets on the previous slides and what we're uh, doing within the industry and with our projects, this is a, a capture of the reporting that we're doing on our own uh, carbon footprint and the offsets, um, the science-based targets, the, the way in which it's um, uh, signed off on science-based targets through the SBTI initiative uh, as well as uh, what that actually looks like for the calendar year that this, or sorry, the, the fiscal year for Bureau Hopple that that's represented here. Uh, and the latest version of this includes scope three. And, I, and I'm pretty sure the first time we did it, we didn't include scope three. So that's also a moment of evolution for ourselves. Uh, the next slide is, um, a uh, snapshot of how we're attempting to recognize how our 
goals align to both the UN SDGs as well as the Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, so you can see SDG number 13, climate action, is very straightforwardly noted as climate action in our sustainability report. Uh, affordable and clean energy, SDG 7, aligns to uh, energy and carbon in our report. Uh, not 100%, but there is some alignment there. This is important to us uh, as, an in, as an international organization to maintain some clarity on how we align with some of these programs. It may or may not be um, important to your organization, but we wanted to share it as an example of where um, on the theme of overlaps, there are lots of other initiatives and lots of other standards uh, and making sure that we're um, that we're showing alignment where it exists is something that we wanted to do. So the last slide in this section uh, is a reiterating the, um, the commitment and the, the four very specific uh, actions that are required as part of that commitment uh, as a signatory. The first one that we've just outlaid uh, is using the Bureau Happel Global Sustainability Report as an example. Um, like I said, it is uh, it, it includes topics um, many more topics than just carbon, um, but the um, pulling out the carbon information we think is really, really interesting to start to consider what that evolution process looks like, how embodied carbon is really being tackled and actually coming back to the action plan internally on how to make it happen in addition to reporting all of these really cool things that, that we've been up to 